CSS transitions. They're really cool. You can do all kinds of crazy stuff with them. But I figured I'd show you how to um, do something at least utilitarian at first, something that I think you'll, you'll use before you start getting into the really crazy stuff. Um, and I'm still learning CSS transitions. So I'm, I've got a, a basic grasp on them, and I figured out how to use them for navigation bars, and that's about as far as I've gotten with them. So uh, I, I think I have some examples I can show you of some other cool stuff that we would just have to dissect because I'm not sure how it's done. But this is a, a pretty simple unordered list. I want to turn it into a vertical navigation bar. So the words 1, 2, and 3 would be stacked up vertically on top of each other and then you hover over one and the menu bar pops out to the side. I think that would be kind of cool. Um, now normally this is what you would do under Spry. You remember the Spry nav bars? Spry menu bars? I hate those because they're incredibly large file sizes and good luck editing anything in there. Did we just do this or was that one too far? We just, we just did this but it was, it was uh, horizontal menus. So I figured I'd show you vertical as well. Um, it was been specifically trying to show you some of the different um, transitions that there are. Um, so let me grab, start popping some code on here. Um, oops, I really just want this. Um, grab my code examples. Let me see. If you do ul. The basic premise for a um, any type of transition is that you usually have these descendant selectors, and th these two are the exact same, but you put one of them in the hover state. So something up the road, or something that higher uh, uh, higher up in the hierarchy, when it goes hovered, or when the mouse is over top of this part this thing will change. Um, and it doesn't entirely have to be this. You can actually make it happen so that um, uh, this, the same thing changes. So you can have a hover over uh, the link for one thing. Sorry. How am I trying to say this? This is also acceptable. You can just have something change on itself back the way it was. But we're going to make it so that when you hover over the first level list item, the second one pops out. So you can do something like this. I think this will work. Obviously it's not the greatest because thing, I'm seeing some things. Um, the list item, I, all I did here was hide the uh, this thing, the A tag, not the list item, not the unordered list, so all of that is still there. If you wanted to make this a little bit more um, useful so that the unordered list actually completely goes away, we would have to do the, the thing that is containing all of those elements. I was just doing something a little weird here. This would be annoying to have to deal with, I think. Um, so I still don't quite like this particular design. And the other problem is that if you start to get into the transitions, and these are a pain to type, but it's dash webkit dash transitions, I-T-I-O-N. You have to do three sets of transitions, webkit, which is Chrome and Safari. Who's an Opera? Oops. Uh, WebKit is Chrome and Safari, though Chrome is getting a, um, an overhaul. They're actually creating a new engine for it. I can't remember what the name of it is. Um, so the, you, there might end up being another one of these. WebKit will stay for Safari, and then Chrome will get its own new one. Um, I think they're actually going to try and do a... One of their ideas was that they're going to try and do a better job of not coming up with these vendor-specific ones, that they're all just going to use the, the right one. Um, 
O is Opera, Mose is Mozilla. But the thing that I found out about this is the transitions do not work when you go from display none to display block. Just transitions don't do anything. So instead what I've seen people do is set the original opacity to zero and then set the hover opacity to one. Zero being completely transparent, one being nice and solid. This comes with its own problems because they actually, you can see the fun little transition, it's nice and, and fades in, um, but it still takes up this gigantic space. Um, so here's the, here's the fix, the full fixes for all of this. Um, if you want to make this look like a, a, a better navigation bar, list style type none padding zero margin zero. I'm going to do this exact same thing on the UL LI. So all of them are now, everything should be flush left. It's not perfect, but it's a little bit, at least I got rid of the bullets at this point. Um, to make a, make it a nav bar a little bit more usable, push that out. I'm also going to do a ULLIA link. When you do those, you should also do the visited as well. Whenever you do a nav bar, you want to control the hovering, uh, um, your, turn your links into, into nice big rectangular buttons by setting their display to block. And in design view, you'll be able to see this. Each one is now essentially a div tag that I control the background, I can control all the different things on it. Um, and so what I'm going to do is set the width to 50 pixels, the height to 20 pixels. Oops, hitting the wrong divider. Um, and what that will do is each one's now a nice little, a nice size block I can start to play with. Um, oops. I still don't like this particular design. What I usually do is text align center and then if you want to vertically center it it's line height and set it equal to the height of the the box I guess if I set this to 30 that might actually show up a little bit better yeah now they're sort of more vertically centered let me give this a background color too nice and fairly light. There we go. So you can see that everything's nice and centered in their boxes. The other fun thing to do here is I, I don't want these to be just hiding them here, having this giant white space and then they just fade in. That's kind of dumb. Um, what I'd prefer is if 1, 2, and 3 were stacked right on top of each other and then the flyout menu came to the right of it. So what I'm going to do is set my, my list items in the top level. I'm going to set those to relative. And I'll show you that list items, when you're doing a multi-level drop-down menu or multi-level unordered list, Unordered sub unordered lists are nested inside list items. So if I set the list item to relative and then set the unordered list inside of it to absolute, I can start to contain that wherever I want. And the cool thing is, I can actually make it go outside of the box created by the list item. I'll show you what I mean by this. So I'm going to take the list items, I'm going to set their position to relative. Did I spell that right? Relative. I'm going to take the unordered lists and set their position to absolute. And then they need dimensions, where they're supposed to be pushed around to. So I'll do top zero, 
left zero. I think this works. Yeah. So now that the sub items are absolutely positioned. So the computer just rips those off and then puts them back on later once everything is drawn on the page. Now if I pop this in, ooh, something weird's happening. All kinds of strange stuff is happening. And the part of the reason is because I need to do this. I'm going to move the those boxes so that they're at least 50 pixels over to the left. Um, now I might be able to see what they're doing. There we go. One, two, three. Yeah, they're actually there. They were just overlapping each other and sort of interfering. Now, I have this as the transition set to a thousand milliseconds. One second. It's way too long. Um, I find two or three hundred milliseconds works really well for most transitions. Um, that's a fifth of a second. It's still there. It fades just a little bit, but they don't interfere with each other quite as, as bad. Um, and if you at the rate of 200 milliseconds, most of the transition, uh, these transitions, the ease, ease in, ease out, they don't matter very much. Um, they're, they're too quick to actually have a, to see that a, an ease in slows and then speeds up, or if it's slowly and then s whatever, does the reverse, yeah. How does Internet Explorer do this? I.e., this doesn't do it at all. The transitions don't work. They work in every other browser, so this is what's known as uh, degrading gracefully, even though it's not perfect. And the transition's gone, but the transition's really just extra flair, right? So if that's gone, the site still works. That's degrading gracefully. The cool stuff doesn't work, but it, the, the main structure of whatever it is the task is still works. Um, I had a really cool example here. Not gonna work. Google tends to not work in Chrome and um, Opera. This is it. This is the one I wanted to look at the code because it was. Yeah, this one. This one made me pee my pants a little bit. Apparently, you can do that. Yeah, that was my question. I was like, that's awesome! I don't ever really want to use that in a website. That looks really weird. <laughs> it's, a, it's a little bit much, but uh, um, you are allowed to control all kinds of different things when you do the, the transitions. What you do is you specify which of the different properties you want to, to transition. So you can leave the background color the same. Um, actually, I should show you that this when you do when you do transitions these two selectors effectively select the exact same th thing on the page just one of them has a hover state in the in the in its hierarchy so whatever you change in in the hover is going to use these transitional properties to override this one now i could also say background blue Let's not do that, let's do black. And I could just do, tell it that the only property I want it to change is opacity. I don't know if this is actually gonna work or not. But if you want to be specific, you'd say, these are the properties that I want to have uh, as transition. I don't, I think it'll end up doing it anyway. Oh, background's not going to work because I'm changing my unordered list, but the backgrounds are on the A tags, and the A tags are above the unordered list. They're not going to um, show. So let's do border dash color. There we go. I 
think that'll work. Now my transition's not working at all. Yeah, I'm still not understanding that then. Really kind of slowly pop into place. So you can do milliseconds or seconds for transitions. I found that. Um, so MS is milliseconds. There's a thousand milliseconds in a second. Or you can just do one, two, three, S. I think you can even do um, decimal points. Um, just try it editor. Simple stuff like that. Do you see how it changes speed? It goes in and then slows down at the end. That is... Here, it should say ease. Huh, it must be built in. Never mind then. Let's try this one. What? <laughs> yeah, flipping things upside down. Um, that's what the other one actually does. Uh, it transforms to 180 degrees. slowed it down, but it won't do the hover, the rotate properly. I don't know. I don't know how they did this one. I don't see the code for it, though. Well, there you go. There's a, a little bit about the transitions. That's as far as I've gotten. Has anybody played with these? Okay. What are you doing? It's fine. Oh god, it's attacking. Um, wow, you can do keyframing. Ooh, this looks fun. Awesome. Setting animation. So this, you can actually create basically a little flash path. That's all done with CSS. There's no JavaScript behind that. And, wow. You have to say you have to put in keyframes, which if you've done Flash, you're probably familiar with keyframes. Oh man, you've got to be kidding me! And then you probably have to set up every single step along the way, what transitions happen between them. Oh. Oh, and then you have to do the exact same thing as keyframes, and then as WebKit keyframes. <laughs> if you've done Flash, this is probably this is no big deal. Um, I said why, honestly. <laughs> I'm sorry, you I'm sorry, you video game people. <laughs> I'm used to the timeline in Premiere, and I wanted it to behave that way. And every time I go into it, I'm like, I don't understand. I just want to move it from here to here. Um, yeah, I haven't played with animation at all. Awesome. So that means uh, web designers are going to become animators.